the guitar of the week. It is this beautiful D'Angelico Premier Mini DC. So this is a smaller body. It's like a size of an ES-335. So it's a smaller uh, body. This is the Brown Burst, which probably is not coming out super great in the video, but it's very dark, as you can see. Okay. Now this has a couple things that are going on. It's really cool. This guitar now sells for $8.99. I think during the holiday season, if you got on top of it, I think these were down to $6.99, something like that, $7.99. They were a little better deal. So what do we have? We have a maple neck. This is a set neck, of course, solid in the center and then hollow on both sides. Um, I love these little ebony knobs that they do. It's really nice little detail right there. 14 inch radius with a C shape, but I do not get C shape from this at all. Um, this feels very D or U shaped, very thin, very, very, uh, Gibson 60s neck. Uh, in my opinion, if you played some of the thinner Gibson, uh, 60s neck, that's, uh, what I, I feel when I check this out. Beautiful block mother of pearl inlays and, uh, very, it's a, got a graph tech new bone XL nut 22 medium vintage nickel silver frets medium vintage um I, I hate the word vintage in this description because vintage always sounds tiny you know little frets these are not tiny frets these would definitely be uh they kind of vibe like the narrow tall frets on the fender american series guitars so really cool you have grover imperial tuners as you can see right here and since we're looking at the back the back of the headstock you can also see it's made in indonesia and that's one of the things that made it uh, appeal to me because uh as you guys know acoustic guitars in this price point and hollow body guitars generally are going to be made in china for the expense it's very rare to have them made in indonesia or korea anymore so uh really cool and i still believe that i think uh in my personal opinion uh, indonesia is just banging with quality right now they're putting out some of the best guitars in the market for the prices now, of course, it has this over-the-top ornate headstock, as you can see, and there's definitely mixed opinions about that. <laughs> um, I like it because I don't have anything like that. You know, this big ornate uh, chrome truss rod cover and then this, like, I don't know what you call this thing, like ornament? I guess we'll call it ornament on the on the tip of the headstock. Just looks really fantastic. This one came up set, set up really well. And it also included a deluxe gig bag. Two volumes, two tones, three-way toggle switch. This is the part that I don't know and I don't quite understand. Um, they're saying Pau Ferro, Pau Ferro, Pau Ferro neck, or, uh, ro or sorry, Pau Ferro um, fretboard. Man, I just don't see that. It looks like really dark rosewood. I mean, it almost looks like ebony, but it's, I mean, but so um, I trust them, but man, looking at it, I mean, you guys see it, right? This is a really dark fretboard. This doesn't, so it doesn't really, it doesn't really look like, uh, usually the Pearl Ferro, Pearl Ferro, whatever is really light. So there you go. Okay, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna plug it into my Fender Deluxe 65 Reverb uh, head. Yeah, Kev says, no way, it's Pao Ferro. Fe I, I agree. Uh, yeah, it's just really dark. So it could be. One of the things, though, is that, um, you know, when I bought it, it's one of those things, like, they could have changed the spec for this year, and then I'm reading current specs. Okay, so it's, um, <laughs> Wendell says, I strongly dislike the headstock. Wendell, I had a trouble with these headstocks for the longest time. They were just too, like, over the top like just too much for me but for this guitar i don't know why i just like this is just vibe the way i wanted it to um and it sounds great so let me go ahead let me switch to the guitar view i'm running through the 65 deluxe reverb let's go ahead and check out the neck <laughs> Okay, now I want to do is show you the middle position. These are the two pickups, and there's a really nice, like, in-between tone, tone that's really bright, and I like it.
a guitar like this just has that vibe, which is what I was going for, right? And, um, and you know, I have an ES-35 Gibson, and I was thinking about getting an ES-39. I had one a long time ago, and I got rid of it. And I was lucky enough at Sweetwater when I picked one of these up, I played the neck and I played the guitar and I go, man, this is it. This is so much cheaper. And it's everything I, I kind of want it to be. So I go, this is the way I'm going to go for this. So let me go ahead, go back to the guitar view. And let's do the bridge, which is going to be really bright because, you know, it's the bridge pickup. Now, a great comment is from HK says, hey, that switch location is odd. It is odd. Um, I, you know, kind of we want it up here, but on the Gibson, it's there too. I, I agree. I wish it was up top. I kind of used to the Les Paul. Let's go ahead and switch and do some overdrive. Just going to use my my OD11 overdrive that I like so much. I'm going to start with a neck pickup and give you some, some neck distortion sounds. <laughs> So, so basically, as you can see, it's like a brown burst, beautiful guitar. Uh, out of the box, uh, no fret issues, no nothing I had to correct. In fact, I still have the original strings on here. I don't know what the strings are. I thought, I thought it said strings. Oh, D Angelico, ten to forty sixes. Okay, that makes sense because whatever's on here, you know, the the ball, the the balls are weird because they're like. Black, gold, silver, black, gold, silver, which is not a color pattern I'm familiar with. That makes sense that they're, they're having their own strings made. Um, so didn't have to change the strings. That's um, that's actually a good thing to mention because sometimes when I get guitars, you know, I don't know about you guys, but when I get a guitar out of the box, I play it and the strings are just, they got to go immediately. So that is the Premier DC Mini by D'Angelico. So any questions about it? Anyone got anything to say, good or bad. <laughs> uh, so for, what do you think? $900 in today's market, what do you think? $900 made in Indonesia with a deluxe gig bag. So the tops of spruce veneer, laminated maple body. They're using the only brand name components. Well, I think the bridge might be hardware. Okay, bridge and tailpiece, nickel tunematic. Okay, so they're using the Grover 109 Super Automatics. So that's cool. And then they're using the tunematic uh, bridge system. And then they're using their own pickups. These are the Supro bolt buckers. As you guys know, uh, D'Angelico bought Supro and Pictronics. And of course, that was probably a smart move to start branding their electronic side, the pickup side, to something Supro, since that's what, you know, they're known for electronics on the Supro side. Susan wants to know, how's the bridge? I think the bridge is great. No, no scratchingness, no, 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 no wackiness. The, usually on these bridges, that corner can get really sharp and it's fine. Like I said, I've done nothing to it. Um, I got it, I pulled it out of the box, I played it, and I've been playing it since. Um, you know, I tend to, because I like it, I tend to bring it out for the show and have it in the background. But for the most part, it spends most of its time uh, on a stand <laughs> right outside this office where I can pick it up and play it because acoustically it's loud. Right, it just resonates, right? It's really nice. It's gonna sound like a wah because I'm gonna put my arm in front of it. I'm trying to be funny with the wah, but it's not gonna work. But it. Brad Guitar says ebony neck. I, I think ebony neck, but they're saying Payo Ferro. And of course, a lot of beautiful binding. 
So there's your guitar of the week. I hope you guys like that. Let me go ahead and put it back real quick. If you enjoyed this podcast clip, you can watch the entire episode by clicking the link in the description or streaming it on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. You can also join it live every week, Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I hope to see you there. Until next time, know your gear.